PMR446 Personal Mobile Radio is a part of the UHF radio frequency range that is open without licensing for business and per- personal use in most countries of the European Union. PMR446 is ideal for small scale and line of sight outdoor activities. It is used in both professional and consumer grade walkie talkies, similar to those used for FRS, GMRS in the United States and Canada. Depending on surrounding terrain, range can vary from a few hundred metres in the built up area to a few kilometres. Formulation and plans for the band started in April 1997 when the European Radio Communications Committee decided on a 446 MHz frequency band to be used for the new radios. In November 1998, ERC decision 9825 allocated frequency band 446.0 to 446.1 MHz for analog PMR446. Another two decisions established license exemption for PMR446 equipment and free circulation of the PMR446 equipment. The first country which introduced these frequencies for license free use was Ireland on the 1st of April 1998. The United Kingdom introduced PMR4466 446 service in April 1999. In October 2005, ECC Decision 05-2 added unlicensed band 446.1 to 4.6.2 MHz for use by digital DMR-DPMR equipment. In July 2015, ECC Decision 1505 doubled the number of analog channels to 16 by extending analog operation into the 446.1 to 446.2 band previously used by digital DMR and DPMR equipment, effective January 2016. From January 2018, the number of digital channels will also be doubled by extending into the 446.0 to 446.1 MHz band used by analog FM. Range may be just a few miles, for example, between hilltops when out in the open, or only a few hundred meters if used in a built up area. Your results may vary though, of course. A current record to be noted is a 333 mile, 535.5 km handset to handset transmission from Blythe in the United Kingdom to Almere in the Netherlands. PMR446 radios use frequencies that in Australia, the US and Canada are allocated to amateur radio operators. PMR446 radios can only be used in those countries by licensed amateur radio operators. The conflicting allocations have been something of a nuisance to amateur operators due to the use of the equipment by European tourists. Instead, the US and Canada Canada uses the FRS system which provides a similar service on different frequencies, around 462 and 467 MHz. These frequencies are allocated to the emergency services in Europe, notably the fire brigade in the UK, the police in Russia, and commercial users in Australia. This is why I always stress on my channel that people change the stock frequencies these cheap Chinese radios come with. PMR446 compliant equipment may be used anywhere throughout Europe. PMR446 covers band 446 to 446.2 MHz and PMR446 radios must have a fixed antenna and a maximum ERP of no more than 0.5 watts. Radios may now have removable antennas in some countries as long as the ERP does not exceed 500 milliwatts, for example in the UK. So it might legally be possible to program some of the cheap Chinese radios in low, low power mode and use them on the PMR bands, even though I am sure many do already. However, you may still be committing an offence if you operate equipment including equipment that meets the requirements of the R and TTE directive within 446.0 to 446.2 MHz that does not meet the PMR446 license exempt operation requirements. The general ECC decision however still requires integral antennas and the actual implementation varies between different countries. If you are not sure, just buy certified equipment. PMR446 users must know that their radios are only license exempt if they are built and operated within the conditions of the exemption regulations. 
If modifications are made to the equipment such as adding an antenna connector, the overall maximum ERP or other technical parameters must not exceed the permitted levels set out in the interface requirement. You should also be aware, especially when buying in the second-hand market, that equipment that has been approved for license use in the past does not necessarily mean that it is suitable for conversion for PMR446 license, license exempt use. Examples include the channel width could be too wide, example 25 kHz instead of 12.5 slash 6.25. Some channels are not in the spectrum that can be used by license exempt equipment. The output power is too high, e.g. resulting in an ERP greater than 0.5 watts. Another similar in concept American family radio service equipment cannot be used with the UK in the, within the UK on a license exempt basis. Some PMR users set up repeater and or internet gateways using software like EQSO. However, please note that PMR446 equipment that is designed for base station use or mobile equipment that is configured as a base station, e.g. as an internet gateway, is unlikely to meet the license exempt operation requirements, so operate with caution. Analog PMR uses 16 FM channels separated by 12.5 kHz from each other. Per regulation, maximum power, like FRS, is 500 milliwatts ERP and equipment must be used on a mobile basis. CTCSS is usually used, with more upmarket models also featuring DCS and or fixed carrier voice inversion, which many think is not legal, but uh, it is. Before January 2016, only the lower eight channels were allowed for analog FM operation, but now digital DMR tier one uses 16 digital voice channels separated by 12.5 kilohertz from each other with four level FSK modulation at 3.6 kilobits. Before January 2018, only the higher eight channels were allowed for digital TDMA operation. A quick look on eBay or the many Chinese marketplace websites such as AliExpress or Gearbest will show a wide array of radios available ranging from very cheap to relatively expensive. Many come in sets of four or two and all offer varying features and abilities, however all in theory should perform very similar, however in practice some find that many are better and it's not always the case that the most expensive radios perform the best. Be aware that some of the cheap Chinese PMR446 radios may not entirely satisfy license exempt requirements, even if they state that they do. Sticking to brand name makes and or radios supplied by reputable suppliers should ensure you are safely using a set of radios that meet requirements. One of the very first PMR radios available for use here in the UK came from Motorola and was called the TA200. I saw this for the first time at a mountain biking show in the UK in 1998 and not long after myself and my friends had a few of them which I still have. A superbly rugged radio if a little heavy on the batteries but overall a good performer. As a licensed radio ham I find these days I use PMR radio for far more than I do conventional VHF and UHF comms. The addition of my family and frequent holidays means that I am often using my radios set to the PMR frequencies. Most of us know that repeaters and simplex channels are pretty devoid of activity in comparison to the PMR analog and digital frequencies where there is often activity. Use of CTC, SS, DCS tones can help make PMR446 feel more secure and usable even though it isn't at all secure, so be very careful what information you pass over. Some radios offer voice inversion technology to scramble your voice and there is also the digital sets which offer more channels and there is less chance of eavesdropping and it's less likely there will be the slightly chaotic use that sometimes accompanies its use by children. Right, well I hope that you've enjoyed that video. I wanted to make this video because I get a lot of uh, questions and comments in some of my videos with regard to PMR and the usability and suitability of the cheap Chinese radios. So I hope this has answered pretty much all of your questions on that subject. However, if you do have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below and I'll try and answer them as much as possible. Overall, enjoy these little radios for what they are. They're cheap, fun and generally quite reliable and in the right conditions you can get a fairly reasonable range with them too. Um, 
so yeah with that uh, i hope you've enjoyed it please like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this it really really helps me when you do that and and it gets more advertising revenue in so i can then go off and buy more radios and offer them to you in future competitions so keep your eyes open uh, there is a competition running see the last video for that one that competition is still open if you want to be in the chance to win a zasto mini 9. Okay, I'm going to shoot off. The next test that I do for you will be of two new PMR446 radios, which I'm going to test alongside uh, a couple of cheap Chinese radios out in the field. and do a little bit more, uh, try and shake the testing up a bit, do something a bit different, try and change things a little on the channel. Um, so I'm going to do that, so keep your eyes open for that. And if you have been, thanks ever so much for watching. Catch you later. Bye.